All right, let's go. Uh, I, I'm going to go uh, Will Keller, who I'm going to affectionately call a fanarchist, along with Mark Paceo and all the rest of them. You know, Paceo because he's constantly pacing back and forth metaphorically in his enclosure, screaming and yelling like a chimpanzee while not embodying the law and not being a true anarchist, living with death pledge mortgages, begging the audience for laptops, screaming at them and threatening them. Um, following statute policy and code, not understanding the law of the land, saying common law is bullshit. So you guys are culted the fuck up over there, right? We had a limited, like I do it. I've, I've made the rounds at one point when Pauly boy was hot, he was getting numbers and on a, like an upward trajectory before whatever happened, you know, it's like I've made the rounds Castro high impact, uh, Zachary Hubbard, you know, David Rodriguez and, you know, Will Keller and Mark Paceo and all the rest of them over there. I made all the rounds and the themes are all the same. Once they get a, a load of me, uh, they never quite feel the same and they never quite want me back. They still watch. They still listen. They still comment from time to time, usually not in public. They can't be seen doing that, right? Because they know what I know, that I know what they know, that they're not really living their information. And they think this is just going to be some fucking grifting career of coming on here and telling the audience what they need to do. And then screaming at the audience and telling the audience that they're slaves and they're dumbed down and they're too retarded. Well, that's fine if you're really living the truth. Because I do that from time to time. I can do that because I'm living the information. You can't. Because then what happens is when you get in the room with me and someone like me, I go, hey, pal, you going to make me say this? I tap him on the shoulder. You going to make me say this? Front everybody? No, I didn't think so. Right. So let's cut the fucking games. You ain't no anarchist talking no masters, no slaves. If the bank's your master, if your bitch next to you is your master, right? If the tax man's your master, if U.S. corporations your master, if the local guy in a costume's your master, well, then you ain't no anarchist. You're a fanarchist. You're a wannabe, right? And it's embarrassing uh, to the rest of us to even have to witness or be in the room with you. So let's just get that fucking dynamic right once and for all because I'm tired of looking at it and listening to it. And I'm tired of seeing it clogging up my fucking social slave media feed right and i'm tired of also too don't hate the player hate the game i'm gonna hate on the game a little bit why not i'm really not hateful in my heart but we're gonna comment on it we're gonna speak on it right it grinds my gears a little bit the ego in me if you will so i'm tired of watching four or five hundred of you at a time or 40 or 50 of you really doesn't matter the number sit there and hard all this nonsense too and enable these motherfuckers right and put wind in their sails going nowhere right off the edge of the flat earth, you know, let's, let's, let's really cut the games. Cause I know a lot of these folks listen and they're all on the Facebook and they share Look what Polly boy saying and doing about you. Yeah, I know. But you bitch ass motherfuckers won't come in here and get on the panel though. You won't have a conversation about what you're doing and not doing. You won't deny either what the fuck I'm saying is true. So you know what I'm saying is true and you won't cop to it, especially in public. And you won't even be real with yourself in the fucking mirror and make a change. I don't understand what good you folks are. If anything, this is a distraction, disempowerment, movement full of agents as, at this point. Every one of them. You guys are indirectly, you may not know it, and you may not be getting a check from some corporation, but spiritually, you guys are distraction, detraction agents. You go around talking a whole bunch of shit that looks good and feels good, and when we ask you what you're doing and are you living that, you say no. Is anybody in the audience going to be inspired to live anything different than if you ain't showing them how it's done? No. So it's a big fucking waste of time. It's a big jack session. It's a big look at me. I'm important. I've arrived. I'm the next new wave of fake news media. And I'm kind of tired of it. Okay. Especially when there's motherfuckers on the ground who ain't getting no play and ain't looking for it. They're just doing what's true and what's right because they know it's true and what's right. They don't need a platform. They don't need fucking paychecks to do what's right every fucking week. And you scum come here and you get a whole bunch of money and attention and validation, which you don't need because it ain't your biggest fucking problem. Your biggest fucking problem is you're an unreconciled, unresolved coward. And no amount of money and numbers is going to fucking change that. If anything, it's going to encourage you to be the same as you are, if not worse. Okay? So just get it clear that when I do these fucking rants and rambles and I'm actually helping you, like your daddy should have a while back. And it's only going to take you guys like five to 10 years, if that, to realize this is what true fucking care and love and attention looks like to get us all to the next level. What your daddy should have done that he didn't. Because, you know, we're in a modern day. 
where the majority of you guys' fathers are just kind of like disempowered bitches can't speak up because their child runs the household. You know, we've gone the other way. We've gone from like abuse, physical, emotional, and mental to a bunch of weak ass, cowardly motherfuckers who say the child straight from God and it knows what to do. And we're going to let it make all its own decisions and never give it any fucking wisdom. Cause we didn't learn any, never lay out a fucking blueprint on how to be and succeed here, knowing the child's not going to follow it till they have their own experiences, prodigal son and come back, but you still got to lay it out. Most of them ain't got it and they ain't living it. So even if they were to go to try to tell, this is what's so great. You got a lot of fan artists online who got people watching them on Facebook and enabling them, but their own women and children don't even respect them and listen to them. <gasps> what do you think about that, Jennifer? Huh? That's true, isn't it? Right. They got a whole bunch of attention and validation online with the falsely empowered codependents, but their own bitches and their own children don't even listen to them and respect them. They roll their fucking eyes when they hear them talk. Oh, here goes so-and-so with the anarchy rap again. We've heard for the 30th time this year that they don't fucking live to get another three laptops to be some computer nerd bookworm geek online and tell everyone that's the answer to join anonymous, put a mask on and hack people or, or put out bullshit broadcasts twice a week. Give me a fucking break. You guys should be fucking ashamed and embarrassed. And the fact that you're not is like astonishing to me. We just occupy different worlds, I guess. Let's go to that. Uh, and I'm sure here you'll see like nice poly boy, the poly boy they like, right? I come in, I have these conversations with people. They never invite me back usually. Uh, and we never get to address how it was a big fucking waste of time. Circle jerk where you just brought me on because I was hot. You know, I'm the hot new mixtape rapper. Yeah, come on. You know, you, you put your hat to the back like Adam 22, you know, and you start trying to fit in and like, yeah. Holly, tell us about your walk in anarchy because we're anarchists here and we're flagging online. Yeah, real cool, real thugged out. Tell us all about it. Really, you're just feds. Like, like you see it in every room, right? They bring on the real ones who are really making some moves, really doing something really about it. They pretend to be about it. They, they get all the gear on. They get the tattoos. But really, they're just asking bizarre questions. They want to know everything about you. They're putting you all on record and they're trying to get you hemmed up because they ain't going to live it with you. They ain't going to walk it with you. You got to go back to the car with the gun and the pack and all the rest of it. You got to do the federal indictments. You got to go to court, right? It's not them. They hire the lawyers, right? They just sell in the image. They go back to the condo. They laugh and giggle, right? That's their content. That's why I say content. They put up the, the, the tent. It's filled with cons. And they get a few passerbys every once in a while who are really about something. They get, come on in. We're going to put on a performance. They put their hand over you and they go, this is my friend, Paulie boy. He's really living it. We're just alike. Tell us about your journey. And I go, could you get the fuck off me? Cause you ain't that right. After about an hour and a half of us talking and I realized, oh, wow, what have I been called into and sucked into? What am I a part of the next day? Right. They come up on me and they go, it's Polly boy. We're, I go, no, get off me. We're not. It's not. Right. So you're going to see the version of me where I stumble into the content and I go, oh, we must all be here because we're anarchists, because we're rights and freedom based, because we really care about doing and living what's true and what's right. We're willing to sacrifice. And then you start to realize, no, it's all just a show. It's all just a performance. It's all just to make uh, the audience believe that everybody's together and doing the same things. You know, we're not. And that's why I said I respect Brian from High Impact. Because he's like been one of the only few people, if any, he's been the only one who came on the air and said, I don't know what Paul knows, apparently. I won't live yeah. like him at this time. I'm too fucking bitched out and scared to do it. I can't, we can't, I can't, it's not even about you acting like I'm a big, bad, tough guy. It's about let's just keep it all the way the fuck real. One way or the other. So I can't even be mad at that. Then I go into a different mode. I go, you know what, Brian, it's all good, bro. If you could do better, you would do better. Apparently you can at this time. So we love you and we'll wait for you to get whatever experience you, you need. I'll, I'll help give it to you. At that point, you're, you're being accountable. You're being response able, or you're admitting that you can't be or won't be. And there's nowhere to go with it. I'm not here to fucking judge and condemn, but you want to play the two face game. You want to shirk your responsibilities and accountabilities. You want to pretend to be something you're not. I'm calling you to fuck out in front of everybody. And I'm shooting shots regularly. You ain't going to get rid of me. And I'm going to create a situation where your fucking audience and other folks who are here are going to go over there and they're going to bring this shit to you every fucking day and put it in your face till you finally have to accept the truth and live life on life's terms. I'm doing you a fucking favor. 
because no one else apparently in these realms will fucking do it. They're too busy trying to figure out how to get a network going and make money and all the rest of it. I'm good at this point. And I'll continue to be good based on the truth. And if not, well, then I'd rather not be good in this venue. I'll be good in another venue with it. And that's just the way it is, right? So sometimes we got to do what the rest won't because that's what's called for at this time. You can't stop an idea whose time has come. And I kind of have learned to own and love the position. You know, it just makes me rare. It just makes me authentic. It just gives me a real bond with this audience that goes beyond just coming on here and shoveling shit around every day and bullshitting everybody, including myself. Right. I've seen the creation of true lasting and loyal bonds here with what would be an audience that's become a community non-munity. Right. To the point where three to five people who I'm now dealing with on the ground who go to jail with me and stand tall and are willing to live and walk this wall came from this interaction right here. Right. And it probably wouldn't have been brought into my reality if it wasn't for this portal and this gateway to other beings to resonate and walk this truth and be loyal to this process. It's not about me. At being a some pseudo cult leader, you know, where the, the strength and the power and, and the trust and the equity only comes from what works through me here. And the same thing works through everybody else. If you let it be, that's the magic and the miracle of this experience. If you ain't got that and you don't have that callback with your audience, that becomes your community. You don't have nothing, right? You got a weak leader with, with a, a weak foundation. A weak non-leader with a weak foundation is all most of these content creators are, right? Wannabes, fronting, fake until you make it. Many of them make it in the sense that they get the numbers and the money and they don't even do shit with it. What's the point? I'll never understand that, man. I guess there's just some people in this life who are players and they really want to get to something and the rest are just looking for what everybody else thinks they want. Right. It's more important to have that house on the hill and get the numbers every day than keep it all the way fucking real with yourself and each other. I can't imagine living like that because when all that shit goes away or you get old and gray and you're ready to die, you're going to have to look your fucking self in the mirror for the first time ever. I wouldn't want to have to be you. So this ain't hating, right? This is waking. I'm not hating. I'm waking motherfuckers up to look in the mirror and see who and what they are and what they could be and leave the old shit behind because we ain't even really got no other choice at this point. I got to come on here and fucking ramble every day and loop the same shit in, in, a, in a little bit of a different way, if possible, to get it to fucking click with all of us and to remind myself you know, what the fuck we're here it's to do and be. Because if not, go ahead. It's not even hating. It's, it's we're just calling it what it's we're pointing out what is already on the record, you know, how to if keep you, them accountable. If you, if you if you come off to if you're perceived in a certain way, it's because that's what you have been given off. And to me, Chili is just one perform. He's just a performer chasing clout. At least Brian. They're all like, doing right? that. They're yeah, all doing Brian, that. He was able to come back, you know, reconcile and say and, and give you the flowers. But you know, at the end of the day, it's not about giving me the flowers. It's not even about that. It's about just keeping it real. Exactly. I didn't ask. I don't need people to say I'm a hero. I'm a legend. All this other shit when they go the other way. Chile, you saw it the other day. A year and a half ago, Paulie's a hero. He's my favorite content creator. He's really living it. Right. Go to the next level, bro. Stop bigging my ego up, hoping I'm not going to call out you and what you're not doing. That's not how that works. Stop saying I'm so great because you ain't shit. That's not what this is. Right? It's like, just say that you ain't shit and be real with yourself and others. Just keep it real with yourself and others. Don't worry about how great I am. And I, if I'm great, it's only because of this truth and my willingness to walk with it. You could do the same thing. So don't try to lift me up because you put yourself down and accepted less for yourself. That doesn't change who and what you are, where you're going. And don't try to smile in my face and bullshit me when I give you the game that you're going to take it and run with it and then do the same shit you've been doing for the next two years. As if it's not a, a, a hit to your credibility and your value here. You're willing to act surprised and act like you're with it. And yeah, I'm on board and let's do it. And then nothing. And the next thing we hear and see of you is you're at court crying, begging motherfuckers, paying hundreds of thousands to get beta males to talk for you. And then want to pop out the box with two weeks left and say, I'm a scholar buy my shit again. Beyond fucking embarrassing and condemning. It's a good thing. You motherfuckers don't believe in God because you'd be like, at your wits end at this point with what you've done and what you see from yourself. It don't matter that you don't believe in it because it's going to show you who and what the fuck it is and what this is about here. 
So not believing it doesn't really matter. You're going to get shown, but it's a good thing you don't because it eat you alive. If you had any conscience, and any morals, and any fucking shame, it'd eat you alive. It's a good thing you don't. And, and again, not having it's not going to change the results and the outcome either. Just so you fucking arrogant, ignorant, egotistical motherfuckers get it through your head. No amount of grifting is going to stop you from having to learn how to grow your own fucking food, dumbass. And yeah, we can just was, start there. I was taught that in a world full of masters slash gurus, how are you to tell who is actually the real master or guru at what, you know, the game they're spitting? And I was I was taught it's very basic, right? Because usually the ones who have a lot of followers ain't really living what they're pre what they're preaching. It's you, and they're not you, holding their audience accountable. Yeah. The real guru, he doesn't want all these disciples. He doesn't want all these followers. He's he has so he, he's he has a place to go. He He's on a mission. He, he doesn't need all this extra baggage holding him back. Meanwhile, the fake guru is just collecting and collecting and collecting followers, but he's not living that. He's not he's not an acharya. He's not preaching by example. And that's how you that's how you easily call out these people. Are you living what you're preaching? You know, if not, I could just dismiss you altogether. That's I don't even know. I didn't even know who Chili was, who Brian was, who all these other character was until I actually came here. They were far from my purview. But, I, you know, when I'm presented with these characters, the, the way I have been for the past year coming here, I see right through their charade. What you presented last night, that interaction between you and Chili last night, it was all one charade for him. It was transparent. Yeah. It was it's shockingly dead. transparent. Yeah. Yep. You know, and I roll with it when I'm in the moment because I'm just in my care for the truth and answering questions and 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 wanting to give the benefit of the doubt. But let's be clear. When I get in the room with these people, my intuition goes off like an alarm rings like a bell. You know, I'm aware, if not during shortly after, especially when I watch it back, how transparent it is, how it's all just a performance, you know, and, and, and they'll say and do anything oftentimes in order to just keep things rolling, keep it interesting, you know, keep the audience engaged, but there's no substance to it. You know, and I guess that's what became disheartening to me is you think that you want to be recognized for this shit. You think that you want to uh, be in the conversation. You think that folks are having you there to lead and actually make a change. And it's all just for show. It's all just for business. It's all just empty. When the lights go off, it's back to me over here and you over there. So what's the point? How am I going to live like that? I'm going to show up. It's like, you know, it's 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 this is archetypal shit, man. It's like you could go to any room once again and you'll find. The guy who does it because he's really about it, living it and loves it. And everyone else is just showing up for a check. You know, the Howard Stern, again, one of the broadcasts that I grew up on that I've, I guess, been influenced by or inspired by, at least at a young age, if not continually, same dynamic in the room. You got a guy who'd show up for $9 a week and put his all into it and entertain and be good at what he does. And there's everyone else in the room who's just there for a check. And they're always bitching and complaining and they always want more. And they're always wondering why the lead guy has more than them that they're hating on and looking to get what he has because of the way he's living and his intention. A man who has a why can endure any how. And the why is never money. This is what they all can't figure out. The why is never money. Doesn't come from I could come here and get a million it. fucking dollars and it doesn't change why the fuck I'm doing this ultimately at the core. That's just an extra. You know? So yeah. people find yeah, value, man. They, they they chase the value outside of themselves because they don't know the true value inside of themselves. That's what I've come to, you know, understand. I can't really fault them for that. That's their own individual karma, I guess, to deal with until they finally wake up and realize absolutely it is you know but yeah. isn't part of empathy and care to show people like the Dow says let the wise man chase you let him show you where you have fallen short and where you may yet to fall short so if you got folks who show up in my life i didn't go get them i wasn't aware of them they showed up in my life and said paulie you're a wise man paulie you're inspiring paulie 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 okay 
You brought yourself and me into an experience together and you asked me to be part of it. And you didn't think that I, when you call me a wise man, I'm not going to chase you at times and show you where you've fallen short, where you may yet to fall short. No, because the Tao is the way to the way. And that's how this goes. It's only because I truly care and I see the error of your ways because I know me that I'm willing to do this over and over again selflessly. Because ultimately, it just makes me look like an insane person at times. I'm aware of that dynamic and other dynamics. I'm really not interested. I actually care about myself and the truth and therefore care about these folks and their truth, which is the truth. And the fact that I can clearly see it's almost incumbent upon me to go, this is what it is. This is what it could be and give you an option over and over again. Right. I don't kick their door down. I don't invade their area. They come to me and then they get upset when I make them a constant fixture of the show because you become the content. This is why so many people stay away from me now because they realize what the game is here. You want to bring you and me into an interaction? Well, then we're all on the chopping block. We're all going to shine the light on who and what we are and we're going to get it out in the open. If you can't hang with that or handle that, you got no business doing this game. That's what enlightenment is. You're going to come in the room with someone else who you said has discernment and wisdom and experience and results, and you're going to do a back and forth practice with them over time. And they're going to speak truth, and they're going to show you and tell you how they're living, and you're going to pick up certain things about this game of life. And you're going to start to become a different person. If you don't want that and you're not really about it, don't bring God or a God of all media into your life. Just stay with the devil and accept less for yourself and keep jacking each other off and lying to yourselves and each other. It doesn't bother me none. If anything, I'm astounded by it. I'm entertained by it. It's fascinating. And it's a cause for pause and reflection at times. Because again, I'm the biggest fool here ever in a way. It's easier to fool these slaves than convince them they've been fooled. And when you argue with a fool or attempt to enlighten a fool, um, you're essentially, he's doing the same thing, right? You're arguing with a fool, he's doing the same thing. You're attempting to enlighten a fool, he's doing the same thing from the antithetical inverse point of view, you know? So yeah, part of what we learn here is it could be good content at times. It could be a way to vent. Um, it could be entertaining, right? And interesting. It could be poignant in the fact that it's uh, a revelation of certain common sense uh, themes that we just oftentimes overlook. But at the end of the day, I have to surrender in faith. You know, you see, I gave to Castro. He interacted with me. He said, we're done. Goodbye. I left him with two messages and I haven't attempted to contact him since. You know, I see when he does his lives, I go over there. I drop a message you know, just to remind them all, hey, God's watching. God, if the God of all media is watching, in quotes, the bit, then God is watching. And that means you all have to be accountable to yourselves and the truth. We have to do that together. If not, we are fucked, right? So stop with the selfishness, all about you, 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 what you want, what you're going to pretend to be, how you're going to bullshit. Up. Get more into what is, objectively. Life on life's terms, not on your terms, because it hasn't worked thus far. That's the same thing I've learned about me that everyone will learn about themselves. Your way doesn't work. Your pride and ego is not better than the universal consciousness and conscience that's put within you fucking use it if you don't use it you lose it right if you don't use it it winds up using you this is where the oppression repression and depression and lack of satisfaction come from they all subconsciously and consciously know what they need to do and be but they refuse to do it so it doesn't matter how many books they sell how many board games how many hundreds of thousands and millions they're never satiated they're never satisfied they're never fulfilled this is as old as the hills. And that's the difference between somebody who can live in a cave, a tent, a trailer, and wake up and go to sleep every day and feel good about themselves and what they do, even if they go off and holler and scream all day and night. Right? Like the Tao says, uh, the, the being who is empowered in the Tao and in the way is like an infant. He is pliable and fluid, soft in a way, but also has a very tight grip. He has an erection that can stand for hours. This is what it says in the book. He can holler and scream all day and somehow reconcile by night and get up and do it all over again. So is it a coincidence that when I step back from me and I look at me and I go, boy, am I a character on this stage? Boy, am I insane at times. I go right to the Tao and it's line for line who and what I am and what I'm living. 
I'd have to say that that's evidence of a good interpretation or idea or mapping of reality in the world. Right? Up and all. <laughs> erection and all. I have a powerful <laughs> erection still at this point, Emmanuel. I know you were thinking that and wondering that. Yes, I'm going to confirm that. Yeah, uh, I used to question, like, why does he let these bozos surround him, you know? Because me, I'm, like, allergic to I five minutes with these kinds of characters, and I'm already getting the heebie-jeebies, and I need to exit the room. But you, you seem to, like, just let him linger. And I was like, so I had the Dow to flows. The Dow flows like water to the places most will not go. The lowly places, right? The lowest place, yeah. <laughs> you know? So we, again, you, you could tell me everything about me that I've already looked at that I know seems bizarre, illogical, irrational. And when we go to the Dow, it's one for one. You know, they'd say the same thing about the Christed being in scripture, always hanging around low life elements that everybody wants to get away from. Well, it's because you don't see both sides of the dynamic. The folks who the world is saying is the lowest of the low have nothing on the politicians and all the supposed leaders and philanthropists. Are you kidding? That's the thing. Like we can sit here and go, well, Snafu is this, that, and the third. He's doing this, that, and the third. Ultimately, he has nothing on Bill Gates. He has nothing on Donnie Trump and Joe Biden. He has nothing on even people closest to me at times with what they've done and said to me directly when they were supposed to love and care for me, lead, guide, and protect me, have done worse than everyone. So I would be being hypocritical if I didn't have a love, a care, and a forgiveness for him that I've been forced to cultivate for them just for myself if nothing else, right? Forgive them, they know not what they do. Um, but yeah, I, I keep them around because the alternative is denying them access to the word and, and, and the authentic experience and walling up um, and pretending that, you know, the game that I've played here with myself and others at times, that if it just wasn't for these things and them and whatever else, that I would be X, Y, Z. And it's like, no, dude, that's not the walk here. It's not what this is. Don't get it fucked up. Right? So, again, God, the universe has an interesting sense of humor. We'll put it that way. Uh, in the paths that it seems to lay down for people and the timing that it chooses to reveal what's meant for you in. Right? Um, and this has been spoken about from the beginning of time. Right? God works in mysterious ways and it's not on your timing. It's on God's timing. And I just conclude from what I've seen and experienced, that's absolutely correct. You know, what we want and don't want, what we like and don't like doesn't matter as much as what your purpose is here. And you're not as much in control of that as you think you are. And as far as laying it down for you and your karma, you're just in charge of walking it, apprehending it, walking it, living it and surrendering the rest. It's in. I can't go on anything else than what I've kind of learned and experienced. So. That yeah, man, like I a, mean, that sounds like a definitive Paul unflaccid to me. In every way, there you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I would think that that a good life lived is a is a general balance and reconciliation between the duality that is existence, right? So, you know, when we cover the Jedi Sith thing yesterday, I saw a lot of parallels in my presentment at times here, especially with the Sith, uh, and I saw a lot of parallels with the Jedi, and I contend that these stories tell a story about two extremes that much like the yin and yang have to be reconciled into the gray area which is more of a neutral position right it's acceptance of what is and it's the ability to direct it to create an outcome you can't deny the dark side and live only in the light side we see what happens with these folks on here when they do that. you can't go all the way dark side and be devoid uh, of the supposed light side these are opposite same sides of the same coin of the same experience. You can't hold one up and tear the other down. They're equally valuable and applicable depending on situation and circumstance or desired outcome. Right. All right. Let's go to has a lot. that story right? has a lot. Yeah, that, that whole Jedi thing, like, you know how Anakin was supposed to be, you know, the promised Jedi, but then. He, he went bad so it's like it also teaches you that all these promised figures aren't necessarily very promising you know they have they might have a dark side further on down the road to them so you know I, I think people should be aware of that sometimes when they see a whole group of people running after this one character thinking oh he's the next promise well he might also be your next doom so yeah, you got a lot of folks on here. It's very Talcati and who talk a lot about feelers. And like it said yesterday, 
the Sith explained to the Jedi that the difference between you and I at times is I'm not afraid to feel. You claim that I'm detached from my feelings, but I'm willing to open me up and go to all the dark places that you want to ignore and avoid. Right? I'm I'm far from a person who's afraid to feel. Right? The difference is, is I'm willing to feel, I feel those things, and then I transcend or transmute or use it to activate and change who and what I am or the circumstances. You got a lot of other folks who claim to be Jedi 24-7, 365, all about love and light. But as soon as you put that harsh truth in front of them, they fight and run and project and reject because they're afraid to really feel. They'll talk about how their feelers are so important, but they're afraid to feel all of who and what they are and really look at who and what they are and feel the truth of the facts of the matter. They'll run and they'll fight it. They'll ignore it. They'll get arrogant, wall up to try to protect the truth of what is, right? So at some point, you got to drop that wall and you got to stop bullshitting yourself that you're all love and light and that that's a positive modality. That's toxic positivity. You're really just afraid to look at who and what you are and feel that fucking pain to face your fucking death, to know that it's knocking at your door any minute now. What the fuck are you going to do and be from now till then? That's the question. You can't get into that space and own that space and transcend and transmute in that space. I don't think you got anything here. Other than an illusion and a delusion, right? Yeah, I feel like a part of that was talking directly to me. You know, I, I could admit within myself, there's a, there are certain things that I'm in fear of within myself. It's almost like I'm scared to open up Pandora's box, almost because I know what could come. Um, and yeah, I live somewhat in a fear of of that, and and. I'm getting to the point in my life where I'm I'm feeling a fire being put under my ass. It's like do or die. Now's the time. Do or die. You know, get over your fucking. That's fear. what alchemy is, man. The, the albedo, rubedo, negredo, right? You gotta put it into solution. You gotta heat it. You gotta boil off the impurities, and you gotta be left with a more uh, purified element. And you got a lot of folks who are afraid of being put in that dissolution solution scenario. They're afraid of that heat lapping up on them. And they're afraid of the transcendental transformational process. Um, at that point, you're going to stagnate, right? There has to be the constant, like you see, evaporation, condensation process. You know? Right. You see it with the growing, rainfall and all the rest of it. You're either growing, changing, or you're dying. Those are like the only three states in this reality. If you don't, I feel like if you, if you don't um, align yourself with the growing and changing state, then you're just going to align yourself to, to death. You know, I got a guy on here whose name is Glasscock, <laughs> which is like fucking amazing. Uh, and I usually if if you don't want me to use your name anymore, please tell me. But you have such an amazing name. If that's your real name, uh, his, the first name starts with a C. It's Mr. C. Glasscock uh, says government <laughs> is slavery. I wonder if that's like a setup to some kind of a hacky joke. Glasscock. Oh, Mr. Glasscock, you can see him coming, huh? All right. <laughs> <I'm> really right. <laughs> um, yeah. See him coming a mile away, Mr. Glasscock. <laughs> the Unslaved Mind and Spirit with the One Great Work Network. Uh, Will Keller, who is an acolyte of Mark Passio. Let's run that for, I don't know, a while. We'll get back to me and listen to more of me until I get tired of me or you get tired of me. And then we'll end this broadcast. This is part two. We already did an extra hour, hour and a half. Uh, but thank you, Mr. Glasscock and other contributors and supporters. Uh, you are a blessing, of course. Right? You're an inspiration. You're a motivator. Uh, you keep me inspired and motivated to show up here and do what the fuck I do. The alternative is not pretty. Right? It's like picking up trash. It's like being a fucking slave. It's not great. All right. So thank you. Basically, you folks are like Make a Wish Foundation, and of course, that's cousin Glasscock, uh, twice removed, Glasscock side of the family, right? I don't talk about it much. Um, Irish Jews, Glasscock, uh, Israeli uh, conjugation. So, um, <laughs> yeah, non-taxable event, extended friends and family. Uh, that my friends and family love to support me. They love me. They love to support me. They want to see me do well in life. It's good. It's good that I have all these extended friends and family here who are willing to gift, contribute a thousand holy days of Unslavia. 
like the wise men who lay gifts at the feet of the little chubby Christed baby. Uh, it's an amazing experience to be part of. It's it's a somewhat bit non bit, right? Sort of going full Talcott there. But again, that story, you know, as much as it can be seen as arrogance at times, I think that the story of the Christ of being in Scripture applies to all of us. You know, I think that there's a ever more conscious and aware, quote unquote, Christed state of beingness where we do actualize and realize and we become one with the supposed Godhead, if you will. We don't be we don't become that or replace that, but we become more and more one with it, if that makes sense. I guess the best way to put it is God-like. And we're going to be, I don't think, God of creation. But at times we can appear God-like when we merge, right? Like the Tao says, take you back to the Tao before the Bible. You can't know the Tao, but you can be it or be with it. That's good enough for me. I, I don't call it Jesus as a God. I don't call it really God as a God. You know, it's more of an experience uh, and a state of beingness, uh, application and results uh, than it is a person place or thing as far as i'm concerned so um, the Tao is the way to the way you can't know that god or that experience but you can be it or be with it and then once you experience it you can language it out if you choose to do so time i guess unslaved mind and spirit will keller let's get to it um, i don't even remember doing this uh, this is anarchism modern day anarchism the folks who didn't see it. Really corny white guy rap slash hippie guitar drum music. Really bad music as an intro, by the way. Somebody's really bad music who they know, I would bet. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to Natural Freedom League. You can find us 